Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallam wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba' Ahabit tafillah Marhaban bikum And we'll have our Ramadan sittings uh, And we'll read from Imam bin Uthaymin Rahimahullah ta'ala His beautiful book Called Uh Ramadan sittings or sittings during the holy month of Ramadan, Jalus fi Ramadan. And this book is a way of going through many beneficial fawaid or benefits that this great Imam of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah put together uh, in order to benefit people. So that every day they have a lesson, they have something that they benefit and they walk away with. So we'll get right into it. And first and foremost, as we've entered the holy month of Ramadan, we and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us to fast uh, two days so far, alhamdulillah. Two days, or th this is the third day? The third day, alhamdulillah. And pray the tarawih. We're not going to really get into the rulings uh, as much. We may do that separately. But this will just gain some of the benefits and follow the way of the, this great Imam, his book. So he began his first sitting. He, he began by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, my dear brothers, we've come to a noble month and a grand season. Allah makes great makes it great in reward. He opens the door of good for whoever turns to them, and it is the month of goodness and blessings, the month of bestowment and flourishing. Uh, Ramadan is the month in which was set down the Quran as a guide to mankind, also clear signs for guidance and judgment between right and wrong. It is the month that is known for mercy, forgiveness, and safety from the hellfire. And in this regard, in a hadith in Sahih, uh, Bukhari and Muslim, uh, the hadith of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, said, when Ramadan comes, the gates of heaven are open, and the gates of hell are closed, and the devils are chained. And there's many different narrations of this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that you'll find in Bukhari and Muslim. And that the, some of the benefits we gain from this hadith is we first learn that in this holy month that the gates of paradise are open. The gates of paradise are open. And the gates of hellfire are closed. And that the Devils are chained. And some of the scholars, they mention, as far as the devils, they mention that the major devils are chained and that the minor ones are still around. You know, devils in human form that, uh, you know, cause you problems or people who are evil and they try to do bad things to you or they try to destroy your fasting or destroy your good deeds. So uh, the scholars mention uh, different things regarding the devils being chained, but we know from this nus, at least, that the major devils are chained. And that when you are inclined to do bad deeds during this month, then that is a sign often of your own, uh, your own inclination towards wickedness or your waswas, -was. you know, the waswas, -was, uh, you know, and it could be the waswas -was of the minor shayateen. Because we know that so many evil things still take place. While we're fasting, there are people having giant concerts, giant rave concerts. Uh, there are people who are worshipping devils. There are people who are doing shirk of all, in all its various forms, shirk of akbar. There are people going around graves and sacrificing animals and giving it to the, to the grave. And giving it to their, uh, their dead saints the dead righteous people or the people they believe are righteous. So there are people doing devil worship uh, even during this holy month of Ramadan. But we know that the Messenger of Allah said that the devils are chained. 
So Ben Othemini says, and indeed the, de the gates of heaven are opened in this month for the, for the increase in good actions and good desires from, uh, from mankind. And the gates of hell are closed for the decrease in disobedience from, uh, from the people of faith. And the devils are chained so that they are not able to do what they normally do otherwise. So this lets us know that during this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made easier for us to do good. And one of the deeds that are, is always good for us to do, all the time, in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan, that is seeking knowledge. And this is a type of seeking knowledge. In fact, the fact that we are reading, just sitting together, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, learning how to worship Him, and reminding one another this right here, that means the Malaika are, are, are here. The Malaika are here. They're in this room. And the Malaika witness the gatherings and they seek forgiveness for the people in these gatherings. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Talib al ilm, faridatun ala kulli Muslim wa Muslimah. That seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim man and Muslim woman. And the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ يَرَدُ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يَفَقُوا فِي الدِّينَ Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. So if Allah increases you in knowledge, that means He's giving you, he, this is a way that He shows love for you. مَنْ يَرَدُ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا That means that He wants good for you. The more you gain Islamic knowledge, علم النافية, knowledge to worship Allah, how to worship Allah properly, this is drawing you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it shows that Allah wants good for you because He could be giving you more knowledge of how to play music, more knowledge of how to be a rapper, more knowledge about, uh, you know, all of these kind of false knowledges can be given to you instead of the good knowledge which brings you closer to Allah azawajal. But instead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easier for you to come closer to Him and worship Him to wa ta'ala. And the Prophet said, Men sallat al tariq and yal tal misuhu bihi ilman, sahhal Allah lahu tariq al jannah. Whenever or whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Men sallat al tariq and yal tal misuhu bihi ilman, Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. So that means the path to paradise is the path of knowledge. Islamic knowledge is the path to Jannah. Uh, the path to Jannah, because the Prophet ﷺ said, "Man salat al tariq and yal tal misuhu bi alman." That whoever traverses this path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to Jannah. Why? Why is that? Why do you think Allah makes easy uh, if you learn Islamic knowledge? Why does He? How is that making it easier for you to worship Allah? How do you think? Okay, you become closer to him, yes. Yeah, this is true. You become closer to him, how? By the knowledge. The knowledge teaches you how to worship. Can you pray without knowing how to pray in Islam? Can you, uh, don't you need to know how to make wudu? And you need to know how to make ghusl? And you need to know how to fast? All of this requires what? Knowledge. No, it all requires any. And that ilm is ilm al -nafiyah. So that shows that knowledge is a wasila to Jannah. It is a means to paradise. And it's a wasila to Allah, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal. It's a means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowledge is a means to Allah. This is why it's so important, even though we get upset that I buy a few books here and there, but those books are a part of the means to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those books are beautiful. <laughs> and those books, if we use them, if we learn them and we practice them, they can be a part of our means to Jannah. Now, good. So the, the Shaykh, then he mentioned, uh, he mentions uh, a beautiful narration about Imam Ahmed. Imam 
Ahmed narrates on the authority of Abu Huraira that the Prophet وسلم, said, My nation was given five specific things during the month of Ramadan which no nation before us was given. The breath of a fasting person is sweeter to Allah than the smell of mist. The angels ask for the forgiveness of the fasting one until they eat. Allah beautifies heaven every day and says, My righteous servants are about to be spared suffering and harm. Then they will be sent to you. The devils are chained so that they are not able to do what they would normally do otherwise and they are forgiven in the last night. They said, O Messenger of Allah, are you referring to Laylatul Qadr? He وسلم, replied, No, but indeed the reward follows the good deed once the deed is performed. So here we learn that it's important to realize the beauty and the status of Ramadan. That Ramadan is a blessed month and that even though there's mushakta, there is some you know, there's difficulty. We get tired. Long days. It's our Fajr, we pray, what time? At 3.30. No, yeah, 3.30 Fajr comes in. The Adhan here. That's early. You know, that means you forsake your bed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that means that you had to have suhoor before 3.30. 3.30 is when you stop. You cannot eat after that, when that Adhan goes. So, that is difficulty. But the reward is immense. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants Forgiveness, he beautifies the heavens, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, the smell of one's breath, of a fasting person, is something good to Allah. We might get offended. We may see, subhanAllah, so-and-so needs to brush, so-and-so needs to use the miswak, so-and-so, man, they're hungry, because we can smell it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Believe, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala holds that smell as something more beautiful than the smell of misk. So that lets us know that that's a deed of Jannah. That's a deed of Ahla Jannah. Ben Othaymin says, My brothers, these are five particular things Allah has chosen specifically for you and uh, for you from amongst the other nations. The first one, the breath of a fasting person is more beloved to Allah than the smell of misk. This is a smell which is disliked among the people, but to Allah it is better than the scent of misk because it is a result of worship and obedience to Allah. Whenever there is a sign or result of obedience and worship, it is beloved to the exalted one. And then he rewards them with what is superior and more preferred. Do you not see the martyr who was killed in the way of Allah and with the intention of raising up the word of Allah, they will come on the day of judgment with blood that is red, but its smell will be the smell of misk. And also during the Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his angels, look at my slaves who have come to me disheveled and dusty. Disheveled means that they're they're not neat and tidy because when you make hajj, as we made umrah, umrah, you know, your izar is, is getting dirty, uh, you, you know, you're sweating, you know, it's, it's difficult, you're, you know, you're, you're tired and it's wrinkled and, you know, it's, it's tough. And hajj is even, is much greater. The person comes dis, disheveled and, and, uh, and dusty. As, uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Look at my slaves who have come to me disheveled and dusty. And this is narrated by Ahmed and Ibn Hibban in his Sahih. This disheveled appearance is beloved to Allah in this situation because it is a sign of obedience to Him as it represents the observance of ihram and leaving uh, off the luxuries. Because everyone looks the same, whether it's the king or a president of a country or the one who's very poor, the one who's an oil worker, the one who's a, a garbage man. All of them, they wear the same. And you can't tell one from the other. They all came together to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the reward and the favor of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And they'll be rewarded for that. And forgiven. 
And something that's beautiful, a beautiful statement of a great imam, his name is Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. What's his name? Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. They call him Sheikh Islam because as our Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim Rahim, he mentioned, he, there wasn't a science that this imam didn't know, uh, didn't teach that when he taught it and when he wrote about it, you thought that that was his specialty only. That's why they call him Sheikh Islam. If it was grammar, Arabic grammar, Arabic language, he was a, a master of it. If it was knowing about the sects, the various groups the, of people of bid'ah and desires, the Sufis, the, 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 the Khawarij, the Murjia, the Karamiya, the, all these various groups and sects, Sheikh Islam knew their arguments, he knew how to debate them, and he knew how to destroy their arguments, and he did it with excellent manners. So you would think that that was his specialty only. And if it came to something in Aqidah, in Creed, he had immense itqan. He, he gave details and tafsil. You know, he was a great imam. Anyhow, aside from the greatness of that imam, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said about ibadah, and this is very relevant to what we're talking about here. He said, al-ibadah. Uh, al ibadah ism jami' li kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min a'mal wa aqwal al-dhahir wal batin Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah he said so just to let us know that our fasting and all these acts that we do getting up in the morning for fajr making wudu um, making umrah making hajj being good to your parents obedient to your parents giving gifts all of these are acts of ibadah how do we know that? This beautiful statement of Shaykh al-Islam is uh, ibadah, worship, is it's a comprehensive term that refers to everything that Allah loves and is pleased with. Anything you read in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded it, that means it's worship. Anything Allah commands you to do is worship. And Anything that Allah loves is worship. Anything that pleases Allah is worship. Good. So everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and is pleased with that is mentioned in the Quran or is mentioned in the Sunnah is worship. And as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, al-dhahir, meaning uh, outward, wabatin, those things which are internal. So fasting is something which is both actually, it's uh, external and internal. Because internally you have to have your niya. Every night before you fast, you have to make intention that you're going to fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before Fajr. Before that adhan, you have to have intention that you are going to fast. It doesn't mean you have to say it on your tongue, I'm going to fast today, it's Tuesday, the month of Ramadan, I'm fasting, no. But instead, you just have to make that intention in your heart. The place of the heart, uh, the place of the intention is in the heart. So you have to make intention. If you make intention, then that's ibadah. And that will be ibadah sahih. It will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're fasting. So everything, uh, so fasting is outward in that you abstain from eating and drinking. Somebody might not know you're fasting. And of course it's inward because your intention. You've made intention to not speak bad, to not curse, to not do evil deeds, and more, uh, the asl of not eating and drinking and not having relations for those who are married and other than that. So, all of that refers to ibadah. Uh, and then, Bidothamini mentions the second, meaning the second uh, thing that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen specifically for this nation, he said, the angels ask for their forgiveness, meaning those people who fast, until they break their fast. Angels are noble slaves to Allah. They do not disobey Allah <coughs> in what they are commanded, and they do what they are ordered, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. And they are most deserving for their dua. Meaning the malaika, they don't make sins. They were created to worship Allah alone and do what Allah commands. If they make du'a for you, 
and ask forgiveness for you. Just the fact we're sitting here. If your intention is to learn something more about fasting and learn something more to worship Allah, you will get reward and the Malaika are making, asking for forgiveness for you right now. And they are making dua for you right now. There's nothing better than that. And this is a na'ma for this nation. Uh, and Ben Uthameen, then he said, uh, when Allah gives him permission to do so, it is proof of the greatness of the fasting person's fast. And when the forgiveness is sought, it brings forgiveness as well as a protection from sins in this life and in the next. All of the sons of Adam are sinners who are in need of forgiveness. The Prophet ﷺ said, Kulu ibn Adam khatta wa khayra khatayina tawabun. All the children of Adam commit sins. And the best of those who sin are those who make who make toba, who make forget, who seek forgiveness from Allah, and they leave their sin, and they try their best not to go back to their sin. So, for example, someone who does listens to music, if they stop listening to music, and then they seek forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, ask for forgiveness, and they feel sorrow in their heart, and they do their best not to go back to it, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgives them. Even if they do go back to it, maybe one month later they get weak and they say, man, i got to listen to this jam. But they, they were sincere before. But maybe they got weak, something, because our iman goes up and our iman goes down. Um, iman fluctuates, not always strong. The third thing uh, Ben Othamin mentioned, he said, the third, Allah beautifies heaven every day and says, my righteous servants are about to be spared suffering and harm, then they will be sent to you. The suffering refers to the suffering and hardships of this life. The servant hastens to do good, which gives them happiness in this life, as well as the next, and will bring them to Dar es Salaam. <coughs> Dar es Salaam. The fourth thing, the devils are locked with chains, so they may not accomplish misguiding the, the believers from the truth and keeping them from that which is good. This is from Allah's help for the believer. This helps you. This helps you chain in the devils, helps you to do the good things. It, it seems easier, because now it's Ramadan, it's easier not to watch something. It's easier to, uh, you know, just to do ibadah, because now we're fasting. And we're in a place where everyone is fasting, so that helps us. That helps us to break our fast. We hear the adhan. Uh, everything is closed, but not everybody has that ni'mah. But what we do have to remember is that for sure, the gates of Jahannam, the gates of Jahannam are closed, and the devils are chained. So there, it will be easier for you during the month of Ramadan to, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have ibadah. The Shaykh then said, this is from Allah's help for the believer, that their enemies, the one who call their people to be companions of the fire, are jailed. And as a result of this, you will see the believer doing more actions that are good and staying away from doing evil in this month more than any other month. And that's how you want to have tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fifth thing he mentions, Allah forgives for the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the last night of this month if they do what is required of them in this blessed month from fasting and praying. Then Allah will reward them when they complete the deed for indeed the good deed is rewarded at the completion of the deed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> forgives uh, his servants and he makes easy for them to do good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> has chained up the enemies. And those are some of the mo most important uh, lessons that the Shaykh mentioned in this first sitting. And so it's not to be too long. We'll keep it there. But before... We close, I just want to say that it's very important. Increase your good deeds, your fasting, read Quran. Uh, of course, pray the night prayer and uh, make lots of dua. This is a time for your dua to be answered and make dua for all the Muslims. Make dua for your brothers and sisters in Tajikistan, your brothers and si sisters in Uzbekistan, your brothers and sisters in, Ch uh, in China. Because a lot of them, they're being oppressed. They get oppressed for wearing beards. They uh, maybe aren't even allowed to fast from some of the reports we hear. They are being oppressed in every way. Some of the Muslims are being killed right now while we're sitting and having this lecture. So make dua for the Muslims in Burma, in Myanmar. 
make dua for the Muslims in the uh, uh, Central African Republic. Make dua for the Muslims in Nigeria. Make dua for the Muslims in Somalia. Make dua for the Muslims in Ethiopia. Make dua for the Muslims in South Africa. Wherever the Muslims are, make dua and for North America. For, uh, for the Muslims in the West because they deal with Islamophobia. People hate them just because they're Muslims. Some people are strapped in and, do, and, and may even do harm at the masjid. So make dua that Allah protect, protects them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslims everywhere, protect the Muslims everywhere, forgive the Muslims everywhere, guide the Muslims everywhere, increase the risk of the Muslims everywhere. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.